Welcome to episode 51 of Crashing with Friends. My name is Kyle Hobbs, your host. This week I'm joined by Jackson Corn Chud Brayman. What up, what up, what up? We're joined by Connor Copperhead Hobbs. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Copperhead. <laughs> and Lil Jody himself. Lil and Jody. Andrew Blanchard. Man, I forgot about that. How's it going? <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. And uh, this is actually our one year anniversary episode of the podcast, Andrew. Nice. Yeah. It's awesome. Happy for you guys. Made it one year. One full freaking year of doing this. Yep. Yeah. We did it. It's been a great journey. It's been a fun time. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Something that we can leave our kids if we ever die. Like, hey, this is how your dad was sometimes <laughs> in front of a camera. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, so how's your guys' week? Start with you, Andrew. Oh, it hasn't been too bad. I think uh, today's probably the highlight of my week. You know, it's, it's nice hanging out with you guys. Nice doing the podcast again. Been running around all day. We had uh, Cooper's soccer games. We had Liam's birthday party. And, of course, we have this podcast today. Nothing to complain about. I'm really tired. <laughs> yeah, you seem, you seem pretty out of it. I'm working through it. Yeah. <laughs> How'd the soccer games go? It went really well. He uh, he won both of his games. He, wow. Uh, he didn't do too bad. Um, you know, I'm 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 proud of him. I'm happy for him. What position does he play? He I don't, he goes back and forth. You know, he doesn't really like goalie, but you know, he likes being out there running around with the kids. You know, he. Uh, he gets bored pretty quick, you know. I think we have that in common. He hates being a defender and just sitting there waiting for the ball. Yeah. He's got to be in there. Well, um, like you said that you were retired and everything. So, just saying, if you ever need something, I've always got Stacker 2 ready available for you. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, Stacker 2. What is that? You don't know Stacker 2? Yeah. Oh, man. It'll keep you... A, Keep a trucker running for 48 hours. Oh, yeah? I thought you were going to say, I have a lap that you can uh, nap on. Oh, I, no. dude, I thought he was going to say that, too. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, or, 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 I don't know. <laughs> nah, man. Stacker 2, it used to be, like, on... How I know about it is that they used to play it on, like... Back when WWE used to be WWF. Oh, yeah. And they would always, like, in between, like... Tonight's Monday Night Raw is brought to you by Stacker 2. Okay. The fastest diet pill or whatever. Best way to lose energy, and then it became an energy pill. <laughs> or not lose energy, lose fat. But then it just became an energy pill. So Man, I'm be like a crackhead then if I start losing weight. Yeah, it's uh, basically speed for the yeah. most part. <laughs> it's legal speed. An accelerant. Yep. Jackson's a big supporter of Stacker too. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's all just because I watched those commercials as a kid. I've honestly I've never even taken Stacker Two before. Are we gonna get a commercial and it's gonna be Stacker Two? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, I'll forever cool. make Stacker 2 references. Yeah. That's why we call you Jacker 2 behind your back. <laughs> Jacker 2. <laughs> oh, my God. Is there anything else cool going on in your life lately or anything? No. No, not really. <laughs> cool. And, uh, Jackson, what about you, man? How your week been? Uh, been all right. I can't complain too much. So glad to have football back in my life. Yeah. Man, it's just, like... Thursday morning, like, I woke up, and I didn't get very much sleep, but you know what? I knew that it was, like, Thursday, it was football was back, so I was just like, you know, it's going to be a good day, no matter what. Had a headache about halfway through the day, didn't dampen my spirit at all. Mm. I was like, football is on the horizon, so. It's always something to look forward to. Yep. It's like, your, it's like your spark of hope. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow is uh, the first Chiefs game. The team that I root for, I think we all root for. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Gotta. Yeah. It's in my blood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for some Chiefs football. I'm ready to watch some more football after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, anything else happen in your life? Mm-hmm. Not really. Not that I can really think of off the top of my head. I <laughs> finished uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine because I saw that it was coming off Hulu in a, like, about a week or so 
And I was like, well, I better watch the last season of that. I put it off for several weeks because I was like, man, I don't want this to end. Because I was just binge watching it for a while. But yeah, I, I'm i sad that I have now finished it because there's not going to be any more episodes. And it's probably going to be a while before I rewatch it because I'm probably not going to get Peacock or whatever it's going to. Yeah. Mm. While we're on the topic of shows, I'm glad that they have uh, House of Dragon right now. The Dragon or Dragon? House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I haven't watched I'm that. Pretty, is it good? Yeah. I, I like it a lot. I need to watch it. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, it's it's good. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. There's yeah, like three, I mean, three I episodes out. I really out. like it. So, I, I th- yeah, I think you guys will, will enjoy it too. I hope they have a plan for the ending already. I hope True. they know the whole structure of the show. I mean, it already seems like it's going a lot better than, than you know, Game of Thrones right now. For me, anyway. Uh, it seems like it's it's got a better structure to it, so we'll see. It seems like like for like the um, the spinoffs usually do better. It seems to me than the actual series itself. Huh. Like you know, you can, I feel like it's easier to work on just one show than it would be to work on like something like Game of Thrones. You know, it's yeah, it's just House of Dragons. Like it's only for certain houses. Yeah, you know just I mean? the Targaryens. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if that was a spoiler or not. I wasn't sure. Oh, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. not. I didn't know it's what I, I didn't not. Okay. Yeah, it's in the name for sure. Connor, what about you, man? How about, how's your week been? Um, it's been pretty good. Um, similar to you guys, but different. Watch Lord of the Rings, which... I've still yet to watch that. First 20 minutes was not that good, in my opinion. Really? But after that, I think it got a lot better. Yeah, I heard a lot of good things, so I'm I'm pretty stoked about watching it. Their portray, uh, portrayal of the orcs, I really like. Um, that's really cool. Some of the stuff, the little uh, Harfoots, the little um, Hobbit, yeah, replacements, they're okay. They're whatever, you know. But um, there's some human characters that I like, some elf characters that I like. Galadriel, not really a huge fan of her, but it's like, whatever, you know. She's the immortal hero in this story because she's not dead in the Lord of the Rings books, you know. So it's like, whatever. Oh, wait. So is she played by the same person? No, she's a younger actress. Oh, yeah. Because really? I think it's like 2,000 years before. She's that old? And she's the one that's like... That would be a terrible, beautiful queen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All shall love me and despair. <laughs> yeah, man, I, was, I was watching that for the first time. That really scared me. It scared the shit out of me <laughs> for the first time. It just came out of nowhere. I know. She turns so blue, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> she gets like the, whatever, she gets taken from like Destiny 2, you know what I'm saying? She gets mm-hmm. taken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, the show's worth checking out. Um, I wouldn't say it's going to blow you away like any like Game of Thrones, House of Dragons stuff. You know, I think that's probably a little like a notch above. But I would give the game or the uh, Lord of the Rings stuff that I've seen so far like seven and a half to eight. You know, I mean that's worth watching for me. You know, it, it depends on how much you like high fantasy, how much you, you know you're into oh, yeah. that kind I've of thing. I've got it on my back, so. <laughs> but you know, I don't think you could, you know, love it any more than that. <laughs> there's it's a, true. There's a cool thing with like this, uh, like ancient sword, like an evil sword, you know, and that's like already like a thing that's happening. So I don't know if you're into that kind of like it's almost like a, a ring, but different. You know, it's like a, a weapon. But um, yeah, it seems like they're they're gonna be forging the rings at some point, you know. Um, but yeah, not too not too detailed yet in the three episodes, but pretty good. Yeah, I don't remember uh, when they actually forged those, you know, and gave them to the the seven different. Races, right, because it's like it's like three for elves, five for dwarves, and like. Seven or nine for men, like like men get a shit ton. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's pretty close. So I don't know, but pretty good so far. Um, and then uh, today, uh, played disc golf, had a really good round. Aside from throwing a double bogey on one hole, <laughs> um, that was really bad. But uh, 
had some really good drives. I think I threw my longest drive of my life so far today. Maybe it was like a, around a 400 foot drive. It was pretty crazy. Nice. It was nuts. <clears throat> Through the destroyer. Me and, and just, Bo were both like, wow, I cannot believe I just saw a disc go that far. Was it on a, was it on the hole where you got the military fence to the right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was, it was pretty, pretty mm-hmm. insane. It just kept going. When it, where my disc landed, Connor's landed at least 50 to 75 feet beyond my disc. <laughs> and I usually am crazy. one throwing probably the farthest. Yeah, I was like, dang, dude. It was pretty pretty staggering. Yeah. I was pretty proud of my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> Had some really good uh, sidearms off the, the snap off the wrist. Felt really good today. So yeah. felt good about that. But it took a lot out of me. I was like, even during it, like <laughs> about to like do my birdie putts. Like I had a few birdies and like, dude, just, just standing there about to take the shot. I'm just like, dude, I need like, I need to chill, you know, it's too hot, but I still was able to do it. Um, but then, yeah, today after that, I, uh, started watching the Hobbit movies again, <laughs> which I'm going to defend those, man. Like it was so bad watching those in 3d. I don't know if you guys remember that, but oh, like, yeah. It was really bad watching those in 3D, but um, they're also shot at like 48 frames a second. It's something weird. Yeah, but watching it in 2D, um, <clears throat> it's a lot better in my opinion. <laughs> all the, uh, Froggy all, voice. All the Hobbit movies. All three of them. Yeah, I like uh, I like all three of them. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed with the Hobbit movies. I don't know if it's just because I'm biased because I like just Lord of the Rings. And when I watched the Hobbit movies, I I felt like they were kind of boring. Yeah, I guess you could say that. But it depends on how much you like high fantasy, you know. Yeah. If you want, if you ever read the books as a kid, you know, or the book, The Hobbit, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it works pretty well. I read The Hobbit, but even I really couldn't get into Lord of the Rings. Or what mm-hmm. am I talking about? The I read movie. The Hobbit, but even I couldn't really get into The Hobbit movies that much. Did you guys ever f- finish them? I've only seen the yeah. first two Hobbit movies. Yeah. Were they supposed to come out with more? No, just three. Okay. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, just a trilogy. Yeah. But teach his own, you know, I like him. You know, nobody else has to like him. Like I said, I've I've yet to really get anyone to, like, admit that they're good aside from me. So it's like, <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'm cool with that. I'm going to chill with that. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Uh, yeah, I'm playing Destiny 2. I'm on like episode 630 something of uh, One Piece. Gosh. Uh, yeah, it's been a good good summer, good life. Happy. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? How's your week? I want to start off by saying, Connor, I'm happy that you're in this life. <laughs> yeah. And in this world. That particle accelerator thing that turned on. Yep. Yeah. Switched me into the right reality, apparently. Yeah. 2022, man. It's real. <laughs> Uh, my week's been pretty good. Um, just got Anakin signed up for basketball, so we're gonna start that start that whole thing. He does pretty well basketball, doesn't he? Yeah, he won. They his team won the championship last year. Nice, pretty big moment for the Hobbs house. Did he uh, score any points? Yeah, he, he he is real discouraged if he doesn't score points. He scores at least two to th- <laughs> I would say one to two baskets a game and. He gets some rebounds every game. That's mainly what I want him to do is play defense and get rebounds. Not so much concerned about scoring. I want him to play good defense. That's my main concern. The scoring will come to you. So, yeah, the defense best, is what sets people apart. Best defense is a good offense? Is that what they say? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, no, best defense <laughs> is a good defense in basketball. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know much about basketball, but it's yeah. good that you do. You know, you can help him. Yeah. When I'm out there playing against him, He's left-handed, so I make sure he can't drive left. Okay. <laughs> I put up a brick wall, put up a fat defense, and make it to where he has to drive right so that he gets both of his hands. I mean, I switch up. Yeah. yeah. Can't rely on one. And whenever I'm playing defense on him, I make, sh- I make sure my arms are wide out. Like, And whenever he plays defense on me, I harp on him hardcore. Like, hey, get in that. Get, I always tell him, get big, get big, you know. Yeah. Get your hands out wide, 
get your legs out wide and get kind of a little bit lower and get in a, get in a basketball ready stance is what they call it. Yeah, it definitely helps that you're obviously a lot taller than he is, so he's got oh he's gonna be used to that. <laughs> oh yeah, he really enjoys when he can shoot, score over me, which almost never happens. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I finished Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, haven't talked about it, the finishing it on this podcast yet, but I finished it uh, probably three or four days ago, and I really enjoyed it. Um, the first, like, three quarters of the game were kind of slow, but they were still pretty action-packed and really fun. The combat is really fun in that game. Um, it's really good. If you've never played Final Fantasy VII, it's a good place to start. It's really action-packed, and they really amp the combat up. Yep. Um, I definitely like the, the direction that they went with the new Final Fantasies, and I need to, <laughs> to start playing it more. Yeah, the old Final Fantasies, like Final Fantasy, I would say, uh, what, ten? Yeah, Final Fantasy X and Beyond and Backwards are all turn-based. So you're standing there, one person fights, one person fights, one person fights. Final Fantasy XI on, which Final Fantasy XI is an online game, so really Final Fantasy XII on is running around kind of combat. You know, you're actually fighting, hitting people and stuff like that. But uh, Final Fantasy VII, um, it really just goes up till the end of Midgar, you know, when you fight Rufus. If anybody knows what the Final Fantasy games are, but... I really enjoyed it. There was a really, really good fights. Um, it definitely goes in a weird direction at the end of the game. Yep. To a point where I was like, what am I even watching here? <laughs> yep. Because so, I, I know the Final Fantasy VII story pretty well. Like, I've gotten to the end of that game multiple times. And it was one of those things where my file would always get erased. So I'd never beat it. Yeah. But I got to the end of it a bunch of times and watched several of my friends beat the game and then I watched my older friends beat it several times so I've seen the game multiple times but it goes in a direction that is totally wild it's like what is happening I used to play the the turn based uh, with my cousin when I was growing up and you know yeah. I, I played a lot of them uh, and, and not so much the, the newer ones so I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to playing the uh, the more of the open world Final Fantasies the, the Final Fantasy that I recommend the most for people to play is Final Fantasy 12 Yep. Okay. Yeah. That game is fantastic. The story is super sick. It's about like sky pirates and stuff like that, and airships. Like I, it's fantastic. The world is really cool. There's like walking hot bunny chicks. <laughs> yeah, they're like really hot. And they're walking around. They all use like bows and stuff. They're pretty hot. They're pretty awesome, but they're pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, I would I would say Final Fantasy twelve is the one I would recommend to people as okay. well. Yeah. Right. All I thought of was like Playboy bunnies, like holding bow, bow and arrows, and I'm like, all right, I'll play this game. Yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing about Final Fantasy 12, it's got this um, this really cool system with the AI, where you can program your teammates to do what you want. Mm-hmm. So you can be like, if this, then this. If this, then that. So if you get, if I get below 60 percent health, automatically heal me. Mm-hmm. If you get above 70 percent health automatically throw throw the move Meteor at this guy. Or if the enemy's health gets below 50%, use the move Demi. Or any anything like that. If, if I, you know, when, the, when the, the moment the battle starts, cast Haste on every one of the party members or cast Protect on every one of the party members. So yeah, I usually had one mage that was just like, right when the fight would start, they would go, bing, 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 bing all the way down the line. Like, <laughs> Haste, Regen. Like protect, like um, and barrier, like all around the circle. Mm-hmm. Man, that game is fantastic. I'm wanting to play right now. Talking about it, you get to yeah. switch up your uh, party. Yeah, it's one of those games where you have like six or seven members. You can switch out. And nice. And switch them all out. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing cast. Really, really good cast. Actually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I liked Final Fantasy VII. Good game. Sephiroth. Who doesn't love Sephiroth? Mm-hmm. Um, I also started playing Guardians of the Galaxy. Connor. Uh, beat it a few weeks back. I was recommending it hardcore. Yeah. So much fun. I'm seconding that. That game is fantastic. If you're a fan of like Mass Effect, really, if you're a fan of like Mass Effect games, yeah. play that. Um, or just sci-fi. You, or just sci-fi. You yeah. want to be like a person flying through space that's not re- literally flying, but you know. Yeah. Space adventure. It's it's a funny game. Um, if, if, when you first start playing it, it's a little off-putting if you're really into the Marvel Cinematic Universe 
because all the characters are slightly different than they are in the movies. But the more and more you play the game, the more and more they're the exact same characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good yeah. way of putting it. Because like, whenever you're playing it a lot, that that's definitely Groot. That's definitely Drax. Yep. They that's just, definitely they just, Rocket. Yeah, they just, visually, they look different. And it's also the voices too. You're you're expecting a voice and you hear a different voice. But the more and more you play the game, like I'm probably about 10 hours in, the more and more you're like, these are the characters. I don't need Chris Pratt, you know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we're just conditioned because, you know, obviously Marvel. Right. And it's got a really cool story, a really cool bad guy story. Um, It's got a really cool Star-Lord story. Um, showing in this one, it's not so much his mom dying of cancer. It's the Chitari show up and take him. Okay. Which is really slash kill her. Yeah. Slash kill her, which is a really cool origin story. And the, you re, you replay that s- scenario like multiple times. I mean, it's kind of nice that, you know, it's, it's, it's something new. You're not expecting that. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot of cool little things and there's a lot of, uh, little like data files throughout the world that just build the game out more. Um, there's like only one collectible, and it's like a resource to get you more abilities. Yep. Like there's really, really, and then there's also like costumes you can collect. That's it. That's the only other collectible yeah, my, is costumes. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts about um, games like that is is the, the different costumes you can put it, put on. Mm-hmm. So far, there's a lot of costumes. Yeah. Um, if I could recommend anything to anybody that's thinking about playing the game, if you're gonna upgrade anything at the very beginning of the game, upgrade your visor that lets you see materials throughout the world. Yeah. That was if I could go back, that'd be the number one thing I would have done was go back and find the material. Like it's just a it's an easy unlock, but there's I can't even imagine how many suits and stuff I missed on the first like two levels. Right. Kind of makes, kind of makes me want to. Throw I still up. have not unlocked that, and really? I'm pretty far in the game. That sucks because once you do that, you can then see hey, there's a suit over oh, there's a suit over there, or hey, there's yeah. materials over there, and that also helps you find the secret areas. Yeah. Ah, damn. <laughs> because, like, hey, there's a obviously there's something up here, so then that makes you want to explore more to get up there and find it. You know. Yeah. I feel like but, that's, that's one thing that's bad about me though is I like to to collect everything. I like to collect the outfits and all the extra stuff, and then I don't end up beating the game. <laughs> I'll probably end up playing that game again. Yeah. Anyway, and just do some different choices, little things here and there. And the reason why I say it plays like Mass Effect, it's not so much in the combat; it's in the facts. It, yeah, it is a combat. It's it's you can the whole time you're uh, saying like, "Hey Groot, you go over there and hold those guys." While Rocket, you throw a freaking grenade over there and hit those guys as Groot's holding them. And then Gamora, you fly in there with their with your swords and you play a Star Lord the whole time. So you're like in the moment commanding them to do all these different tasks while you're shooting the guys with your different types of guns and stuff that Star Lord has. I mean, who wouldn't love to uh, to command uh, you know Groot and all them? It's really fun, and it's cool. another way that it's like Mass Effect is what, they'll be having a story conversation, and there'll be a pop-up happen, and it'll be like, hey, um, do you want Star-Lord to say something something f- weird, or do you want him to say something funny? And it'll give you like a two-option a two option choice or a three-option choice or whatever. That's why it's similar to Mass Effect. You yes. have multiple yeah. options, so it's you know, when you do your second playthrough. It appears that some of your choices affect what's going on in the game. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. your choices do matter. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I recommend it. It's it's really all I got is it's really funny. The the times that I'm noticing it makes me laugh the most is when you huddle. There's a, a little animation that you in the middle of a big fight you'll huddle up and all your teammates will get right in front of you and that's when Star Lord's like, "Hey guys, we're gonna get together and we're gonna be a good team." That kind of stuff. Yeah. Whenever you break the huddle, I have the subtitles turned on and reading what Rocket and Drax and Gamora and all them say is hilarious. Oh yeah. Cause most of the time they'll be like that, like Drax will say like that made no sense or Rocket will be like, that was completely pointless. What you just said right there <laughs> as they're running away. And it makes me laugh every time. But, uh, I, yeah, so far it's one of my games of the year that I've played. I love yep, it. Yeah. Me too. I'm loved it. I'm loving it so far too. Yeah. How far are you guys? Like what chapter? I'm on chapter eight. Eight. Jackson. Um, I can't remember the name of the chapter, but I'm a. I'm definitely after the part where like where you find out, or uh, 
Ah, dang it. I don't want to give anything away. Just guess what but chapter you're in. Number. Probably like chapter eight. Okay. How many <laughs> chapters are there? 16. 16, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's decently sized. Are the chapters decently it's, sized? It's like a 15, 20 hour game. Okay. You know, depending on how much you want it's to collect. It's not long. So. Yeah, but it's, it's a really good story. And it's on Game Pass. Okay. That so if you better. have Game Pass yeah. on PC or Xbox, you can just play it for free right now. Yeah, so like good. you said, you have multiple choices. So, you, you know, if you decide to play it, through it you can play through it again and have different choices mm-hmm. and it's got really really good accessibility features you can turn you can set the difficulty to pretty much whatever you want to butter yeah, yeah. it's really good it's got man i've got it set to where like i don't know it still takes like a little bit of time to kill enemies but it's still like super easy yeah you know? is star lord he like, does he kill people well? Like, I mean, I don't know what his moves are, obviously, but yeah, he has like he has several well. different abilities that he, he can use. Me. So I know how he is in the movie. He gets more powerful as the game progresses, but at the beginning, he's not that powerful. Yeah, and he's, he's got just, a really cool dodge mechanic, and he he slides around everywhere with his jet boots. And, like, very good mobility. Around. Yeah, cool. very good mobility. And then you can use an ability where you just. Like jet boost off the ground and fly around the map and just shoot shoot the enemies from high up as your teammates are down there like crushing them. Um, yeah, it's 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 fantastic. Yeah, a, a really good video game storyline. Yeah, sure. really good story. Really so good. There's gonna be a second one. Hopefully, like they, I they hope there's the another one. Movies, and there's like a volume two. We hope so. Yeah, a lot of us. I haven't so. seen the ending, so I don't know, but. I haven't seen the ending yet either, These, but I really hope there's a second one. <laughs> These Marvel games, they tend to sell well, and they tend to do pretty well. So I know it's apparently already doing uh, Well, except than the for Avengers. Avengers. Yeah, yeah, I would say Avengers. <laughs> yeah. So I like the Avengers, like collecting the outfits and, and you know, really everything else, but yeah, the uh, everything else about that game wasn't very great. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, Andrew, you've been getting into um, 3D printing, haven't you? Yeah. So what's the genesis for wanting to do all this? What do you mean? <laughs> like, what's the beginning of it? Like, why did you why did you get into three D printing? Uh, mostly because um, you know I've I seen a lot of people that were were three D printing you know helmets. Mostly, that was that was what started my uh, obsession with three D printing. You know, being able to to just basically print out whatever helmet of whatever you wanted, and it come out just just perfect. You know, I was like, man, I would love to, uh, whether I wore them or not, I would love to just put them up on the wall. Right. Yeah, that would be cool. That's one of my main reasons why I have that Magneto helmet on on my shelf. I just like seeing it. It's just cool, you know? Yeah, I was uh, I was telling, telling the, the guys earlier that you know, I was printing out the, uh, the Stormtrooper helmet. You know, half of it was Stormtrooper helmet. The other half was uh, Skull. You know, it was one of those. That it didn't print out 100, percent but uh, you know, I, I think it could still make it work. It looks like the uh, the helmet, because of the way they printed out, that the helmet itself is deteriorating as well as the skull. So I was like, man, if I just paint this right, I think it'll it'll still look really good. I can still put it up on the wall. Right. <clears throat> so, you are you mainly doing the helmet for Halloween or just just to have a little bit of both? Yeah, I mean, I, it definitely started out as as a, a Halloween uh, project, you know, and then it turned into the whole uh, suit as well. I don't know if I'll do the whole Iron Man suit, but it is our Iron Man helmet that I've been working on 3D printing, um, which is just about done, actually. Just need the, the goo for the side of it. I haven't, haven't really looked into that yet, but uh, I think I'll just keep printing out the, uh, the helmets, just whatever... Whatever. I saw the Cobra Commander helmet earlier. I thought it was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Cobra Commander helmet? Yeah. Oh, you're, oh, I love Cobra Commander. I saw one of the... Cobra! Uh, it, it looked pretty good. That's so <laughs> sick. But uh, I've been I've been slicing them all uh, in half and just, like, taking off the back half of the helmets. That way I can mount them all up on the wall next to each other. Nah. Just start a collection. You want to know a helmet that I would love to have? Like any of the Daft Punk helmets. Yeah, there oh, was yeah. a lot of good Dude, ones. Dude, that'd be sweet. They had a, a lot of the uh, the different Daft Punk ones. 
Man, Andrew, I might give you some cash to make me a Daft Punk helmet for Halloween. <laughs> Jackson, you want to be Daft Punk? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the easiest way to do we'll it. We'll never have to talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah. like, That's true. Man, so how much would it cost me to give you to enough just to make it one Daft Punk helmet? See, that's what's crazy about uh, you know 3D printing, especially the, the helmets itself. You know, the, the filament that you use to print out is actually not that expensive. And, you know, it, it would, other than the painting itself, the, the printing of the helmet, you know, because the filament rolls usually are around 20 bucks so you can print and out how how big are the rolls I don't, I don't know how to gauge the roll but you can usually print out about two helmets per per roll really yeah it's not bad yeah hmm. i've just been working around with the settings lately and trying to get things uh to print out a little bit quicker uh, depending on the settings that you use you can usually print them out you know if something takes like 17 hours if you mess around with the settings it can drop it down you know several hours so uh, hmm. Reach up there real quick and grab one, grab that helmet that's up there, that Iron Man one. It's on the shelf, to the left. <laughs> Where am I at? It should be just right there on the on top of the record player. One down. Oh, this one. Oh, I'm lying. It's black and blended in. <sighs> so that what you've got there is an example of what he made. And why did you give that to me? Like, what did you do to it? Did you mess it up or something? Um, I don't know actually what happened to it. I don't know if it was it, the the printing itself or, you know, I don't know if it, it was the settings, but the edges itself were not 100%, so they kind of made them a little bit jagged. It didn't print them out all the way. And so when I went to go put it on the helmet, it, it didn't fit properly. Like there was, it was very gappy. Mm. But uh, no, it would work for just putting it on the wall itself, which is what I'm going to do with that Stormtrooper helmet that didn't quite print out right. You know, once I paint it, obviously. Yeah, I thought about putting that mask into like a, one of those like Shogun looking helmets, you know? Okay. And having that as the mask for a Shogun helmet. Wouldn't that be That'd sick? Be cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean they're not even that hard to to paint either, which is hopefully like when so you get called out right for now. cultural appropriation doing it. But <laughs> that would be sick though. Yeah, but yeah, being able to to print whatever you want is so cheap. I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to pass that up. You know, I, I want uh, more three D prints, just printers. Sorry, that way I can print out more things quicker. More, <laughs> but uh, also they have different different three um, D printers. They have. Um, uh, the PLA, which is what this is, and they have a, a resin, which is kind of like when it prints it out, it's, it's almost like a mold, which would probably work for more like D and D little figures. You know, you don't you don't have to worry about lines. You know, buffing it out, it's all kind of like a mold itself. We need to all pay Andrew to make us helmets for Halloween, and we'll <laughs> yeah. just be walking around with badass helmets. <laughs> That'd be cool. You know what I'd really want you to print out for me, Andrew? If I really had to have something, it would be the White Ranger. Uh, it, it's funny you say that. I actually did see a, a couple of uh, the Power Ranger uh, helmets, the originals. Uh, there was uh, the white one, and then there was the Green Ranger. Oh, man. They looked really good, too. I, I really want to go white just because I want to make the cool, like, pauldron things he wears on his chest <laughs> and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And I want to make, a like, a Saba. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure you can 3D print that, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, the three D printer you got was only like what three hundred dollars? Yeah, I think it was around three three fifty. Yeah, that's such a good price point for doing this kind of thing. Yeah, I actually I got it. It's hard to know for sure what the price was. I got it on sale because they had that Amazon day. Right, and I've I was looking them up, and the price looks like it had it, it had pretty pretty much gone down since then, maybe because they were cheaper than what. Like, I mean, it, it is definitely worth the investment. The, the fact that you only pay, you know, about 20 bucks per roll, you can d get different rolls of different colors. You know, there was one that was, like, rainbow, which I thought would be cool for, for different, like, geckos or dragons because they have the uh, the chain link type of dragons that would look, would look really good with, huh. like, a rainbow print. Now, does the filament uh, price point change per color? It might go up, a like, just barely for like uh, the rainbow, but it's not much. Maybe five bucks. 
they're usually around the same price, around twenty twenty five. Man, so it's worth the investment. Might have to get give you twenty bucks to make <laughs> me a helmet. That's that really cool. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to printing out the different, uh, not so much helmets, but you know, cutting them in half and and printing them on the uh, not printing, uh, mounting them on the wall, uh, like the. Uh, the one I had earlier. I'm obviously going to have to print that one out again. But if anybody wants that, uh, the one that didn't print out right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. What's the biggest <laughs> thing that you can make with like a 3D printer? What's the with thing yours about, that is like... Yeah, that's the thing about like uh, the, the different 3D prints. You can use a different program that I use and just cut them, you know, like I did to, to put them up on the wall. Uh so if you wanted to do, I actually saw uh, an Iron Giant uh, life-size figure that somebody had printed out. Life-size? Yeah, it was pretty massive. Uh, Dude. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm sure they did it in pieces, obviously, because the 3D, right. 3D printers aren't um, too too big, too, too tall. Uh, so if you do it in multiple pieces, you just basically splice them together. Just, them. It's like a Lego set you yeah. eventually. Put together. <laughs> yeah. there, you know, there are actual uh, prints that you print out that have pieces like that, that you connect them, which makes it a lot easier. Wow. You don't have to worry about if it's going to stay glued or whatever. They fit snug into each other like a bionicle. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. It's a pretty yeah. solid mask. Yeah. Like, I can hit someone in the face with this. Oh, it's going to yeah. hurt them. You yeah. could take a hit. <laughs> you could go, boom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get the, eye, how I'm gonna get the eyes out. I really don't know how I'm going to get the eyes out of there. If you can get, like, the corner piece out, you could probably just rip it off. Oh, really? Probably. They are perforated enough. But if not, I can just solder out more perforations with my... Uh, Soldering iron pin, which is another thing. I, I bought a solder, soldering iron pin uh, that way it doesn't have a, um, a wire to it, so you can get into the little crevices easier and inside the helmet if you need to. Now, when you made this, is this two separate pieces that you put together? Um, that was all one. All one? Yeah, okay. I actually printed it upright. You from the, printed that upright? Yeah, from the bottom up. Yep. Wow. I was I was actually pretty happy how it turned out. Um, other than the the edges, I, I'm I'm wondering what happened to it because the one I printed out after printed out just fine. So I guess I'll never know. But <laughs> huh. it's just one of those things, you know. It's maybe just somehow got slightly off when it was yeah. going up. You know. I mean, Do you have any it, kids running through the house with heavy feet? <laughs> <laughs> Could have been it. Yeah, True. It's, it's definitely possible because I mean, you know, when it when it starts printing, it it goes crazy sometimes. I've had a few times where it did fluke out and the uh, the nozzle, uh, you know, not produce filament or it started freaking out. <laughs> I had to start over. I think that's what the the worst thing about the 3D printing is when you have like a big object, which is also why you want to do it in pieces. Because if you do something huge, you take that risk of it not printing out well at the very end. Yeah. Start all over. A yeah. Lot of, a lot of wasted filament. Oof. And you're just making stuff for, like, your friends at work and stuff, right? Yeah. I, I definitely enjoy, uh, you know, 3D printing. And when it comes out exactly how you want it to, it's a good feeling. It's definitely my newest passion. Really? Oh, yeah. I've, I've been trying to, to dig deep into it and work on the settings. I've done a lot of YouTube videos on it. So, mm. like, how much filament do you have right now at your house? Um, I think i got, like, three spools. I have the uh, black, gray, and a. I printed out a, the Groot, which is the glow in the dark one. So it's a the Groot glow in the dark uh, figuring. So is the filament glow in the dark? Yeah, that's so rad. Yeah, I thought about painting oh just God. the outside and leaving a little bit of glow, like specks, that way you can see it glow through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I just like, the eyes. That'd be cool. <laughs> it would be Seam cool. in the night. <laughs> it would be cool to do the White Ranger helmet in that glow in the dark and only paint just the spots that are gold. Yeah, when I was printing out the uh, the Stormtrooper helmet, I almost did all of it in glow in the dark. That way, I can do the white paint for the Stormtrooper helmet, but the actual skull on the inside would still be glow in the dark. That'd be cool. I saw a, a Prometheus one. 
it was when he sits down at his chair and he's getting ready to take off and the helmet <laughs> yeah it had a mold of that it was like a little circle mount with the arm kind of the helmet sits on the arm and it's like a the bottom piece of his helmet and his head I was like, that was dope. <laughs> thought about doing the head and glow in the dark and gray helmet you can actually put them together too which is cool it looked really good i thought about doing like a life-size one of that like a big ass prometheus have you looked into just like masks yeah, they have a lot of a lot of masks to print. Um, I was talking to uh, to Cody at work. They have a a Red X from Teen Titans. I think that's what it's what it's. Oh, is. like so whenever Robin gets to, like yeah, taken Robin, o- like goes like vigilante, taken over by Slade somehow or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's when he's like um, trying to to catch him, I believe. But uh, he goes vigilante, knowing that he can't do it as Robin. Uh, right. They had a. Uh, a helmet, a full helmet of Red X. That's cool. But, you know, it, it it definitely makes a difference when you have that, excuse me, the uh, the slicing program that you can just cut them in pieces however uh-huh. you want. You can basically turn it, cut them whichever way you want. So if I wanted to mount that on the wall, I can cut it in half as well. Oh, cool. Okay. So I get what you're doing. You're going to do, like, side profiles of the helmets on the wall? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. almost like the Predator's... Um, trophy room you know yeah I, yeah it, yeah it's been a lot of fun for the most part it's it's gone really well most of my prints that little ewok was fun <laughs> i think the hardest part is trying to figure out uh what size to make them because when you use the uh the 3d printing program it doesn't really tell you it just you put in what printer you're using in the program so it kind of scales it to that so mm-hmm. you can, you see the the print before it prints in the the program and you kind of have to scale it you know 100 percent, 200 percent. i think i did that little ewok at 300 and it turned out to be like a four inch four inch scale little figurine hmm. the wow. one that's, he's stepping on the stormtrooper helmet yeah too cool andrew too cool man i can't wait to see the end product of your iron man helmet because you're eventually going to have Venom, like, seeping onto it, right? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really excited about, uh, obviously not having to paint it, but, yeah, doing that that th- uh, Venom goo of, of how to do it. I think I'll do what you what you were talking about and putting it outside and just letting it drip down the side of it. Sounds pretty cool. I think when it hardens, it, it'll look really good. Right. I was telling him he should, like... Get some type of some type of goo or whatever, and put it like put the helmet on its side, let it flow down over it, and then when it starts to drip off the end, that's when you like the the drip. Try to fizzle it out a little bit and make it look like venom tendrils. That would look really cool, I think. Yeah, I think if you just say like a, a Q tip, and you can make like little tentacles off of it. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I wonder what kind of epoxy. I wonder if you could use um black flex seal. Yeah, that's one thing I was I was not sure uh, what what material to use. I mean, you can you can slather that stuff all over a screen door and use it for the bottom of your boat. <laughs> if you can use it for that, you can use it for venom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You might get a bunch of shit to stick to your mask, possibly. <laughs> you know, bag of trash like flying like in the wind, and just all of a sudden that's part of your mask now. <laughs> <laughs> Think it'll, think it'll do that? Will it stick like that? I don't Maybe. think so. I don't know. I don't think so. I've, is it that sticky? I've got flex seal all over some of my pipes in there, and it's not sticky like that. It might be a little sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Put some gloss on it or something. Now, whenever you pull off that mask, wouldn't it be crazy if you saw a different face than well, your own face? What Tell me more. Wouldn't it be crazy if we could choose a different face? Like maybe maybe a celebrity's face or something like that? Yeah. Or... Like in uh, Machete 2, like there's one assassin that has like just the ability to just keep removing like a face off of them. It's like a mask. Right. And, like <laughs> If you've ever seen that movie, it's that assassination's a cool ass character to have I haven't seen that but I've seen that movie Swordfish and it's kind of something similar but instead of like just ripping faces off they are uh, I, I think they surgically 
That's face off. Yeah, that's face off, not swordfish. That's face off. Okay. You're yeah. just thinking What's of swordfish. That's the movie where Halle Berry. It's, okay. still, yeah. it's still a John Travolta movie. Okay. It's John Travolta. There's the gotcha. there's but the joining thing. It's got Hugh Jackman in it. As the main dude. Yeah. Okay. This yeah, is yeah, kind of right. like when he was a lot skinnier before he got all beefed up to play Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, in Face Off, they, Nicolas Cage and <laughs> John Travolta, John Travolta <laughs> trade faces or whatever. Uh, yeah. man, the movie's a like cornball. <laughs> <laughs> so my question to you guys then is, who would you trade faces with? Oh, man. And what would you do with that face for, you know, the time you were trading faces? Uh so mine was kind of hard to think of at first, but then I, it came to me like a lightning bolt, you know? Okay. Um, so it'd be Macaulay Culkin. Okay. Specifically because he's with Brenda Song, and I think she'd make me happy, and I'd live out my days with her, and I'd be happy. Yeah. Okay. You like Brenda Song? Yeah. She's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, she's nice. She fine. <laughs> And that's all you do is you would trade change it to him so you could just be with this chick. Yeah, I think. that's a simple life. I think mine yeah. would definitely be Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, I, I idolized that guy when I was a kid. Uh, I think it'd be hilarious to have that dude's voice. You know, when I was a kid, I always made fun of him, but you know, it's, it's funny to, to hear his voice and and his different mannerisms that he has. You know, I can imagine going to the drive thru and hearing that. Dude, seeing his face on your body would make me laugh. Yeah, I, was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I want the cheeseburger and fries, man. <laughs> cheeseburger fries, give to me. He's like, uh, uh. <laughs> what would you do with his face? I don't know, honestly. I think it'd be nice to just uh, to be him for for a day and. Hang out with the fans, honestly. I don't think I'd have any real reason to be him. Just the fact that it'd be funny to walk around doing his voice impressions all the time. It's just saying hasta la vista yeah. to people all day. <laughs> hasta yeah. la vista. Dude, he still cracks me up. <laughs> it's funny to me that like that guy was the governor of California. Yeah. I was like, like when is he going to reach his peak? You know. <laughs> well, yeah, he kept climbing the mountain, man. He's right? still up there. Like, he just does it all. What about you, Kyle? Um, I would do, I would do Will Smith. Oh yeah, hell yeah! yeah. Just uh, slap Chris Rock. That's the only <laughs> I, it's not necessarily to slap Chris Rock. It's just so I could walk around slapping whoever I want to slap. <laughs> See, I would, I would have taken your idea to be Will Smith, but. Flip it around. It's like I'm gonna go slap the shit out of Jada Pinkett. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, all right, it's time for Will to wear the pants. <laughs> oh my god! So that's what I would do. Yeah, I was thinking about like the different celebrities and Arnold Schwarzenegger. He he likes to prank people a lot. I forgot about that. He, he does. Yeah, he was at the Ripley's uh, museum one time and he was playing himself as the Terminator. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Have you, have you seen that video? No, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, he would... It, you know, I, I think he was at the Wax Museum, too. I, I think it's the same thing. I don't know. But, uh, you know, being able to, to dress up as your favorite characters, you know, and, and prank people. I think uh, Johnny Depp does the same thing. I think yeah. I've, I think I've seen a couple of his with his, uh, at the Wax Museums. Good old Johnny Depp. Um, but, yeah, that's really all I would do is just want to walk around and slap people. Um... <laughs> Yeah, Connor, or I, mean, I should say Jackson. Jackson. What about you? Uh, um, I don't know. There's two that come to mind. Okay. And it's mostly just because they're just great looking dudes, and I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't <laughs> mind face swapping with them, but probably Ryan Reynolds. And Wilder. Yeah. Or I don't know, maybe Harry Styles or something. Okay, so you could be with Olivia know. Wilde. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sweet. I would, I would probably be gunning it for Kate Beckinsale if I ever had those looks. But yeah, I feel like yeah. if you're Harry Styles, you can be with whoever you want. Yeah, I mean, you've got the looks. Got styles. That's true. Yep. I don't know. His name is just hairstyle. <laughs> true that. Harry Style. Yep. Well, 
as you know, just like me as a sexy man, being Will Smith, and also myself, food is also sexy sometimes. Food is, is very it? sexy. Is, yeah. is yes. food sexy? Food can be sexy. Okay. What constitutes a food, like sexy food, though? Can you give me an example? <laughs> like, just so I know <laughs> what a... Maybe like, something you look at and you just get... Mm. Turned on, you know, like. See, I was trying God to. Dang. I was really trying to understand what a sexy food was. Like, I was like, man, this is like a food that you eat just to like set the mood. Like, yo, this, <laughs> this meal is sexy right now, and this is what's gonna be happening after this meal. You, is you're okay, thinking, you know? thinking like a date, date, yeah. date, yeah, like an aphrodisiac. Yeah. So, what would you say then for that? Ah, oh, man. Well, the very first thing that popped into my head. Sounds like something that like the sex would be awful afterwards, but I was like thinking like Italian, uh, <laughs> I don't know, something like like Italian like chicken fettuccine or something. Or, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like imagining like a candlelit dinner with like like oh chicken Alfredo or whatever. I don't know. And then you're gonna dip your balls in it. I wouldn't dip my oh. balls in chicken <laughs> Alfredo, bro. Weird. I think it's more like the sounds than it is actual foods itself. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. I, don't I don't know about you, but uh, a, a good old bowl of fruit salad does it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all them fruits in the bowl. <laughs> I'm slightly aroused. Yeah, that, I don't that, know if that there's banana. <laughs> just looking real good. I don't know them if there's like a. Grapes. I don't know if there's like a food out there I'd want to dip my balls in. Now <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yeah. No. Like, if you had to, what food would you dip your balls in? <laughs> <laughs> maybe like a maybe like a lemon meringue pie. A, Okay. Or a cream, like some type of cream pie, like a, like a Boston cream of pie. Of course, you would say cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, so Cal's cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> cream pie, Cal. Um, I would probably go ah, Jello. Jello, huh? Jello. You're dipping your balls in Jello. That would just be like a slap. Yeah, it'll bounce off. That's slimy, that's, I too. feel like I, that's why I think it'd feel funny. So uh, <laughs> I feel like as soon as I sit them down, like the like I'm like I feel like I get my balls tussled by the Jello at the same time. So probably. Mm -hmm. So Jello, that's what I go with. Like a Jello mold. A Jello mold, yeah. But make I don't care what the mold is. Sink them in. <laughs> <laughs> But when it comes to a sexy food, sexy foods, okay. I would say nothing turns me on more than a nice big old bowl of gumbo. Yeah, that's a sexy food. Oh, a lot of hearty meats in there. Turns me on like oh, that's baby. that's just that's just delicious food, bro. Like hey, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, you that's, guys. That's just what turns me on, Jack. I don't, even I, don't, know. I don't know what he's looking up right now, but it can't be good. Maybe I don't like know. A, I've seen like maybe fruits like a, that. Yeah, there you go. Look at that pear. <laughs> Does that get you off? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, reminds me of like a nice bubble butt. Yeah, man. That's that's what I was thinking as far as a sexy fruit. Yeah, you know, like a, a pear looks like a big old ripe butt. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, that's you know that's your thing. That's Check out all these pears. They got cracks. That's why all these they, girls are getting those surgeries nowadays, getting those fake asses yeah. put in. They've the, the seen the these Kim pictures Kardashian. of pears. Pear? Kim Kardashian <laughs> pear right there. Kim Kardashian. Yep, yep. She really does have clearly pear inspired butt. by that. Like it's so yeah, um for me, like actually talking about what I think is like an actually sexy food, I'm thinking, you know, for one, a few different foods come to mind. So let's break them down by food. Okay. okay. Uh first off, donut. Because not only do I want to eat it, I want to fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you stack about six, seven of them donuts together. Yeah. It's not like someone to be like, I want to fuck it. I, but I would want to try to, like, like, lay down, you know, and try to play horseshoe thing. You know? Ring toss. Yeah, ring toss. Yeah. That's what it is. Maybe get a little bit of that uh, nice, Spray it down with Pam. That nice cream cheese. <laughs> we'll put that in the middle. Cream cheese? Yeah. Nothing uh, sexier than some uh, donut crumbles on you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See how many donut holes I can put in my mouth at one time? Oh, yeah. yeah. And let's just 
let's just be honest. Depending on who's eating it, pretty much a popsicle, corn dog, any anything like that. Depending on who's eating it. Hey, man. It's like sexy said, food. These are all sexy foods. Yeah, sexy food. Um, my next one, lasagna. For one, it's Italian. And then, two, when you cut it and you got that slice that's sitting in front of you, you can see every layer of goodness waiting for you. That is true. That's a good one. That is pretty sexy. And nothing sexier than that melted cheese on top. You know, you can just oh, like, oh, God. So sexy. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> it's Italiano. <laughs> Spread a little bit on the top. A little rather man, and you, Whoa, Andrew. <laughs> and that, that brings me to another sexy food, like... Chocolate lava cake. Oh, oh! The way that spreads out when you cut into it—that's yeah. a that is a sexy food if I've ever seen one. A chocolate lava cake. Heck mm. yeah, dude! That white sprinkle. Uh huh. White man. What sugar powder? If we're gonna go into desserts, we can talk about sexy desserts all day. Well, yeah, tell us what I, is a sexy dessert. The multi-layered. Cakes. What isn't a sexy dessert, Kyle? That's what you should be asking. Mm-hmm. What is not a sexy well, dessert? Would. Okay, let me have claim okay. to my third one: cinnamon rolls. Oh yeah, oh, oh. man! Why didn't I think of that? Here's oh, why: sexy. The smell gets you first; it pulls you yeah. in. You know what I'm saying? The thought, the thought pulls you. The in. warmth, the warmth embrace of the cinnamon roll, the tasty goodness of the cinnamon mixed with the frosting. Yes. It's just layer like after frosting, layer of goodness. Yeah, it all comes together. Yes. Oh, man. That homemade frosting. Mm. Oh. Mm. Something else, man. <laughs> something, something about a cinnamon roll really gets me going. Yes, me too. Whenever I would make cinnamon rolls back in the day, dude, I would purposefully not put uh, like a glaze on like one or two of the rolls just to have way more glaze on the ones that I would <laughs> eat. Right, <laughs> you know? right. Sacrifice. <laughs> Choices were made. Mm-hmm. Lives were lost. See, that's why you uh, you go buy extra icing. <laughs> or you just layer the crap out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Man, you got me wanting some cinnamon rolls right now. I got yeah. some at home, so I Look, don't know what I'm doing. You said what is a sexy food, and I think you named a bunch of sexy foods, man. I think we all did. I think we all did. Yeah. Uh, last one, calzone. Oh, my gosh. It's yeah, everything, a roll. <laughs> you, everything you want a pizza to be wrapped up into a pocket. And you know what a pocket is, right? Sexy. Sexy. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. It's very hot, though. It is true. Very hot pocket. <laughs> and I don't got a good segue for the next one. Segway. The NFL season started. Yeah. So we're going to quickly go down our predictions for... Who we think is going to win each division. There's only a few of them. And we're going to go through who we think is going to be the MVP winner of the whole season. And we're also going to decide who's going to win the whole thing at the end. And Jackson, so he, you have all the divisions and everything. So let's start off with the first division. All right. Um, we'll start off with the AFC. And we'll do the AFC East first. Okay. And we've got Buffalo Bills, Miami Dolphins. New England Patriots and New York Jets. Anyone want to get ballsy and take the Jets? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say the Bills are going to win that. Division. Yeah, I'm going Bills. I think Bills are going to win that division too, but I I'll go ahead and uh, say I'm going to say Dolphins. I'll go against you guys oh. and say Dolphins. Okay. I sense regret <laughs> in your future. <laughs> what do you say, Andrew? As far as just any team. Yeah, from that division he just named. Do you watch a lot of football, Andrew? Not really. It's it's hard for me to to judge. You know, I'm I'm obviously only going to uh, to hope for Chiefs this entire season. Um, I'll, I'll definitely try to to look into watching more um, other than Chiefs, obviously. But I can't really uh, speculate who's going to win. All right. All right. Sounds good. AFC North. You got uh, the Baltimore Ravens, Cincinnati Bengals, Cleveland Browns, and Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm. I'm, I think uh, Bengals win the AFC North. I think the Ravens are going to take it this year. I'm going to go ahead and take the Steelers. I'm going to say Ravens. All right. AFC South. 
got Houston Texans, Indianapolis Colts, Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Tennessee Titans. I'm going to say Colts. Yeah, I'm, that's a good choice. I'm going to pick the Colts as well. I'm going to go ahead and say the Titans. Mm. Yeah, I'll go Colts. Okay. And Matt Ryan's on the Colts now this year, so they're going to actually have a chance. Yeah. I mean, who knows how they're really going to be, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, of course, the AFC West, which I think we're all picking the Chiefs to win it again. Chiefs. Chiefs. So, and for those curious, the other teams in the AFC West are the Denver Broncos, Las Vegas Raiders, and Los Angeles Chargers. Chiefs. The yeah. uh, Broncos and the Chargers, are they strong? Chargers are. Yeah. Broncos and just got Russell Wilson, so yeah, I yeah. The last time I heard about the Broncos, honestly, yeah. they haven't been good. The AFC okay. West is probably the strongest division in all of the divisions right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, and uh, we go into the NFC now. In the NFC East, we have Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, Philadelphia Eagles, and Washington Commanders. Probably the Giants. I'm gonna go with the Eagles. I'm going to take the Eagles as well. Uh, uh, I hate to say it, but... Oh, man. Don't you dare say <laughs> it. Don't do it, Connor. <laughs> okay, I won't say it. I'll go with the Commanders. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see I said it's regret in some of the future. <laughs> <laughs> NFC North. Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, and Minnesota Vikings. I think Packers got it. I think Packers have it as well. Yeah, Packers are always really good. They're missing Devontae Adams this year. He went to Las Vegas, so they're missing his number one receiver from last year. Yeah, I still think Aaron Rodgers can probably make it work. Yeah. I think he's going to have a really good season. What did you say know. the uh, the lineup was? Uh, Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, and Minnesota Vikings. I have zero faith in Detroit Lions winning the division. They always suck. They always suck. I know the the Packers are good, obviously, but I don't know much about the other teams. Bears and Vikings are usually like a mid-rank team, you know. They're not quite great, but they can usually make it into the playoffs here and there. They are very much two teams that are in flux right now. I think Chicago Bears are... In rebuild mode, and Minnesota Vikings would need a lot of things to go their way. All right, so we we all picked Packers? Yeah, Packers. All right. And you didn't answer, but I'm, you take two. Yeah, long. I'm going to say Packers. <laughs> you can't go wrong with Packers. Okay. And, and we got to say Packers because John is an owner of the Packers. <laughs> yeah, part owner. And we love John Holbert. Wise investment. Right. Wise NFC investment. South. Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, New Orleans Saints, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it's hard to like not say the Bucks are going to take it, dude. Yeah, the, the Bucks are pretty loaded. The Panthers, the Bucks. Huh? They got yeah. Baker Mayfield this year. I don't know much about him, but I have work. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds legit, though. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, yeah, Baker I'll, Mayfield. I'll go Buc- Bucks as well. <clears throat> yeah, I'll Bucks. take the Bucks. All right, the last one here is the NFC West. And you got Arizona Cardinals, mm. Los Angeles Rams, San Francisco 49ers, and Seattle Seahawks. I'll say 49ers. I'm going to say 49ers as well. I think even though the LA Rams lost that first game, I think they'll probably win. I think they'll win the division. Think so? You think they're that strong? Mm. I think the team that they played against is probably... Like, if the Chiefs aren't the best team in the NFL, then they are. Really? So, yeah. Okay. I think, I really think that the, ah, damn, I can't think of the name. Buffalo Bills. I think the Buffalo Bills are strong contention this year. Especially, they got Von Miller on their defense now. It's just. They're stacked on both sides. Yep. All right, but yeah, my pick for this one is going to be 49ers. And who do you guys right. think is going to win the MVP? Ah, oh, man. I'll, I'll tell you who I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be uh, Aaron Rodgers. 
I think he's going to be the first person to win it back to back to back since uh, I think uh, Brett Favre did it. Like he got back to back to back MVPs. So, yeah, I it's think he'll, Aaron Rodgers. I if Aaron Rodgers plays well, I think he can. He can do it. Yeah. I think there's a strong chance that it could be Patrick Mahomes this year with how many wide receivers that they have. And how I would much, love for it to be Patrick Mahomes. How much he's I would love dis- for it. Distributing the ball to so many players. I think he could do it again. You know, I think that would yeah. be cool, but, uh, you know, how he played last year was uh, a bit disappointing at times. Yeah. You know, I was really disappointed with them. Sometimes people, a lot of people are saying like, "Hey, does he does he have his mind completely focused on football?" Yeah, because mm-hmm. at the time, he, it was his girlfriend pregnant. Like, was that his wife? Yeah, I believe she sorry, was pregnant. Wife. Not to it? mention his brother, like being a jackass on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, freaking yeah. Jackson. Really? Oh, like yeah. Okay, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, Jackson Mahomes. I did hear a lot a about him. Bad yeah. name for all the rest of us Jacksons. Sure. Is. <laughs> True that. Yeah, he was doing a lot of partying and sketchy stuff. Is, is what I heard. You know, it's hard to, to keep your mind focused on something like that, especially when you're in the Super Bowl, let alone. True. Yeah. And who um, you guys... Oh, go on, Connor. I was thinking Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert? For my pick for MVP, yeah. What about you, Jack? He said... Oh, I said Aaron Rodgers yeah, already. Okay. I'm sorry, I always do that. All right, and who do you guys think is going to win the Super Bowl? Chiefs! 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 <laughs> I definitely hope that they uh, make it to the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. Yeah. Next year, sorry. The next year? It's this year. Oh, is it this year? It's oh, okay. this year. Chiefs! Chiefs. Yeah, I'm saying Chiefs. All now, right. now, if you had to pick a team that wasn't the Chiefs, we're all rooting for the Chiefs and we want the Chiefs to win. So, obviously, in our hearts, I think we got to pick Chiefs. So If it's not the Chiefs, I think it's going to be the Bills. Same. Yeah. yeah. Very good chance. They're looking... Already, like, too too good. You never know who could get injured, though. Yep. It's true. And you it's a long season. The, yeah, you never know how the season's going to play out. So. And, like, some cases, like, you're great all year until the last game of Super Bowl, and then you're broken, and then the other team just wipes you out. Like, what happened with the Chiefs when we, like, lost our last, like, two... Um, it was defensive, right? It was. We lost two of our uh, linemen that protect Pat, uh, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, really? Yeah, and we just got destroyed. I forget which uh, which team it was, but yeah, we were pretty much on third string offensive linemen going into that game. Yeah, and we had, I don't think we had like um, I think we had like maybe one starter left on the offensive line, and everyone else was back up. Yeah, we just got destroyed. It's crazy. And even then, Patrick Mahomes was making some pretty good throws, but they just weren't getting caught. Mm-hmm. That, that's yeah. one thing that that's good about uh, Patrick Mahomes is is being able to to look quickly and make them plays when needed. That was yeah, when we lost insane. to the Bucks, right? That was that year. Yep. Yeah. Them them quick throws. All right. Well, let's move into Yo Dude. Check this out. Who wants to get started? I'll get started. I uh, heard a funny one actually. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yo, dude, check this out. So it says, uh, grapes actually light on fire in the microwave. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just That's scrolling awesome. through them, and I was like, what? That's crazy. Like, I can't imagine why you'd put a grape in the microwave, but the fact that it would catch on fire. <laughs> That's like, wild. Is it just the skin, or does it? There's actually, like, a, a scientific fact about why it catches on fire. It's something to do with, like, the protons or whatever in it. That, that's something that it's made up of. It causes it. Wow. When it's for some reason when it's in the microwave to catch on fire. Um, it's insane. Should have, should have obviously looked more into it, but but it, it's funny to me that like they did a whole like research thing on it, on, and you know, in, at some university, like they looked into why grapes are catching on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude, check this out. You burn more calories in cold weather than hot weather. Yeah, I the see shivering. how that makes sense. Constant shivering and all that. Yeah. And yo, dude, check this out. When you put teeth in a microwave and heat them up, they pop like popcorn. 
Like actual human teeth? Yeah, human teeth or any type of teeth. They pop like popcorn. Wow. Yeah. Damn, I didn't prepare a microwave themed uh, yo dude. So my bad. <laughs> when heat is applied, they pop. Yeah. It's crazy. I got, uh, <clears throat> yo dude, check this out. I got two like little science ones real quick. Um, so one of them is that um, that Webb telescope detects uh, smoke clouds on a planet outside the solar system. So I thought that was pretty cool. So they were able to uh, determine that this planet called VHS 1256B has uh, something called like a silica cloud. It's more like a kind of like a sand clouds and stuff. I think I did hear okay. about that. Yeah, I, I was reading about the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, pretty crazy. It was, uh, uninha- uninhabitable because of of what the uh, the cloud was made up of. Mm-hmm. I've read that they're now one of the James Webb has found a planet that looks like it's just all water and water world. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just- crazy to me that they found like several planets that were so similar but larger than Earth. Oh yeah, way bigger. Yeah, yeah. you know, super Earth. Yeah, but you know, and, and it has one of those just that one factor. That's different than Earth of why we can't live on it. The atmosphere has one chemical that's way more dominant than oxygen, yeah. usually. Some, yeah. some weird thing. Yeah. I, I thought this one was funny. Uh, yo, dude, check this out. McDonald's once created bubblegum flavored broccoli. Yeah, fuck McDonald's. I don't, what? I, I don't know if I could get over the uh, the picture of broccoli. Maybe if I close my eyes and <laughs> maybe they're trying to get to where the kids would want to eat it or something. True, that's wow. like some Willy Wonka stuff. I, I yeah. thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that was like back in the day, like we're I don't know. Eat your broccoli, Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> that would be one way to do it. Yeah, it's bubble gum. I wonder if it actually tasted like bubble gum, though. You know, there, you know, there's so many different flavors that are bubble gum like. It's kind of, your shirt kind of looks like bubble gum from over here, man. Yeah, I kind of want to eat some of that you shirt. Got a bubble gum shirt there. <laughs> eat my shirt. <laughs> you right. yeah. dude, check this out. Um, Bernie Barker, a former real estate agent, got into stripping in the year 2000 when he was 60 years old to get in shape after recovering from prostate cancer. And I just wanted to give a shout out to a homie Damn. who kept it real. Yeah. And. With that, he also bagged the title for being the oldest male stripper. So, shout out to Bernie Barker. I do want to pound, uh, point out, though. He, he said pound. You want to pound he, Bernie? <laughs> 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 He's going to oh, pound. Nah, that'd be hard to do, bro, because uh, unfortunately, he has uh, died in 2007 at the age of 66. Oh. Oh, you got to dig but up I that do, body, man. I do want to like throw that out there, that he was at the age of 60 when he started to do that. I don't know if he continued to do that, like, up till 66, but any 67-year-olds out there who are like, I want a world record on my belt, you can get into stripping right now. What's crazy to me is, like, not only did he do the world record, how old he was, he had cancer, like... Yeah. He was like, I I beat cancer, I'm keeping my prostate, I'm gonna flaunt this shit. He's like, I... He's like, I almost got this shit taken away, and now I'm gonna like, I'm gonna make sure anyone that wants to see it gets to see it. Here's my penis. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bernie Barker, he's a real one. Is that uh, Bob hey, Barker's? Bernie! Bob Barker's brother. <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of look like Bob Barker. Oh yeah. Like he, lo- he looks like a mix of Bob Barker and uh, actually the best way I could describe him is he looks like uh, the old dad guy from Stealing Harvard. Yeah, yeah. He's also like uh, the guy that's constantly trying to get the jewel and snatch. Okay, I got but you. first yeah. wrong, Bob. He looks a lot like him. He's got like the gray hair, but the little bit darker mustache, but everything else is lighter. Nice. <laughs> All right, part two. Yo, do check this out. Um, so NASA is about to test their um, double asteroid redirect test spacecraft, otherwise known as DART. On September 26th. And that's just going to be like the whole, let's slam a spacecraft into an asteroid, see if we can redirect it test. It's funny that they're doing that test because they, they said that there was a large, I think it was an asteroid headed towards Earth right now. I'm sure there's all kinds of shit headed towards Earth. Yeah. 
it's funny though, like the, the stuff flares. That, yeah, the, the stuff that they don't tell you about. Like, oh yeah, such a large object headed towards Earth, and like, don't panic. Yeah, you're not gonna tell everybody about it. Yeah. yeah. So it's just funny. Like what happened with COVID? People, all the toilet paper's gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, asteroid happens, and all the cat food's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that like that's what people decided to stock up on. <laughs> like yeah. into the world, but you know, let's get some toilet paper. And have a and sell it on the black market. Yeah. And no, and nobody even wants that. Like, like, oh, after I get done like shitting, I could just hop in the shower. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's crazy to me is after the, all that ended, the amount of people that had an abundance of toilet paper stockpiled. What are you can do with all that? Mm-hmm. TP some houses. <laughs> hey, you don't have to buy toilet paper for a while, I guess. Gonna be making a lot True. of mummies. <laughs> yeah. Man. Toilet paper companies made so much fucking money off toilet paper that year, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad. Like, like, no, you can only have one roll. <laughs> make your family, make it last. Yeah. <laughs> That's crack <ply>. prices. <laughs> one ply. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any words of wisdom for us? I do have one. I thought it was funny as well. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite ones in the uh, wise words of Master Ugwe. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why they call it present. Beautiful. I love Kung Fu Panda. (laughs) All right. It's definitely my favorite one. Cool. Well, uh, thank you for crashing with friends for the last year. Yeah, we got a year in, bro. Mm -hmm. It's definitely uh, uh, good to be here for the uh, anniversary. It's good to have you, man. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. <clears throat> You're it's welcome, fun. man. Well, guys, hope you guys have a good rest of your week. See you guys all next week. Later. Bye. Later. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. Crashing with friends. Podcast.